nine minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday morning. We have a great book we want to talk to you about. World, Go- World Gone By is the name of the, uh, the, the book. I'm hearing myself in my headset. Uh, can, can you hear me? I think everything's working. Okay. Uh, and the book uh, is written by Dennis Lehane. He's on the phone. I hope I'm saying his last name correctly. He's a New York Times bestselling author. His books have been made into movies a lot, it looks like. Uh, Mystic River, Gone Baby Gone, Shutter Island, The Given Day, Live by Night, Moonlight Mile. Holy mackerel, a lot of them. Um, this one, World Gone By, if you ever think about the mafia, if you ever think about the mob, you always think about Chicago and New York, right? This one takes place in Tampa. I know. <laughs> so I'm going to try to weasel my way. I want to be an extra, extra in a movie. Yes. You know, so okay. like so like they make this movie in Tampa since we live nearby. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can drive down there. Maybe we can be the guy who like gets hit by the stray machine gun bullet, you know, and then oh, you and go. then we just fall down. That's our our whole job is just to fall yeah. down. And right, then right. and then we watch the movie for the rest of our lives and mm-hmm. say, Look, there I am, there I go. That's it. That's, <laughs> it. That's it. That's it. That's the picture of me falling down. There you go. Uh Dennis Lehane, good morning. Hey, how are you? Good. Am I saying your last name correctly? You did. Perfect. Are you where are you right now? Right now, I'm in Boston, uh, but only as part of my tour. Okay. Is that, w- do you live here in Florida somewhere? No, no. I actually had a house there for a while, but I sold it. I live in uh, right now. We live in Los Angeles. Oh, okay, okay. But you set your story in Tampa in 1943. Yeah, yeah. Well, because the uh, the previous book um, with Joe Coughlin and it was set in the 1930s in Tampa, with well, the 1920s actually during Prohibition and. Um, it was because I wanted to write a, a gangster novel. I wanted to write about prohibition, but I felt like whiskey was played out. And so I said, well, where did the rum come from? And what I learned was one of the major corridors was from Havana to Ybor City in Tampa, and then across over to the eastern seaboard and then up. Boy, that Ybor City does have some personality, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it really does. I mean, you know, one of the things I said, I lived in Florida, so I, I can I can, I can, can speak to it a little bit, is, you know, in Florida, it's, it's as you guys know, if there's paint peeling on the side of a shopping mall, they just knock it down and put up a Hooters. I mean, it's... <laughs> exactly. Just, right, right. You know, man, there is no preservation. And, and Ybor City is completely preserved. Exactly. You can stand on it, and as long as the cars aren't on the street you could imagine it in 1920 very easily that's true that mm-hmm. is really really true about that and and uh, it's kind of a shame that the cigar factories disappeared i think there's still one there but one. I, I think the rest yeah. of them are yeah. all gone so so we're talking so we're talking about the mob and, and this is a sequel to a, another book well it's it's connected i wouldn't call it a sequel i kind of call them like a triptych as opposed to a trilogy okay mm-hmm. Any of them out of order, it doesn't matter at all. You can read this story and go, oh, there was another one? Oh, well, cool, I'll go back and read it. But uh, if you didn't, you know, uh, if you did read the other one, you go, oh, this is cool, this is what happens to him now. So, yeah, it's ten years after the events of the previous book, and Joe is, Joe Coughlin is, has sort of stepped down as a, as a mob leader, and, but he's kept his hand is, in as an advisor. And he moves very easily between the underworld and the sort of upper echelons of Tampa society, He's very much a golden boy, very much a golden goose. No, everybody loves him. He makes everybody money, and then he hears this whisper that somebody is is planning to assassinate him. Oh I, wow! So I, when when a protagonist is a good guy to the reader, but a bad guy in in the eyes of law enforcement in the book, anyway, <laughs> is that a delicate challenge for you as a writer? You know what? It's not because here's the thing: most people think they're good. Even people do the worst stuff in the world think they're, you know... They, yeah, oh, interesting, yeah, that, yeah. You know, so you just write from that perspective. And and there's a moment in the book, because it's also very much about his son. He has a, he has a, he's a widower with a 10-year-old son. And there's a moment in the book, it's sort of the height of one of the most dramatic scenes in the middle of the book. His, his son looks at him and says, Dad, are you a bad guy? And mm-hmm. Joe says, no, but I'm not a very good one. Hmm. And you, uh, this this book goes uh, through parts of World War II, and this is also the time that Cuba is open. Yeah, Cuba was wide open, and uh, it was a point in which uh, Meyer Lansky, who wor- who Joe works with, the the real character of Meyer Lansky is is uh, is a is a fictional walk on in this book, and <laughs> uh, Joe works with him, and they are both kind of setting the stage for a gambling empire in Havana. 
So Joe goes back and forth from Havana to Tampa throughout the book. Right. It sounds like a great story, regardless of where it's set. But I, I think the fact that it's set in Tampa is intriguing to me because I live here. Yes. Yeah. And and I know Ybor City and I know the area, so uh, I don't know why I don't know why that makes it more intriguing, but it does. Or it, it adds it adds an element of intrigue, I guess. Yeah, when I'm a, you know when I was a kid and I was reading books, I was in Boston and I'd read a book set in Boston, I'd be like, oh my god, they they drove past that place too. You know, <laughs> that's true. Well, I, and I grew up in New York, and so but so many stories are in New York, so you almost get jaded by it. But you don't have too many set here in Florida. No, no. I mean, there's where you have it is South Florida seems to have. You know, they get right. Like, and Carl Hyacin and you know and um, on your side of the coast I mean you got Randy Wainwright you got Sterling Watson I'm trying to think of anybody else who's working on that side of the coast they're not jumping out at me right now that's right uh, mm. Uh, your uh, uh, character Joe he really moves well between the quote bad guys uh, to uh, uh, US naval intelligence he seems to be able to fit in yes and that's the thing. That's that's the. This is very much a moment about a moment in your life. I think that anybody can identify with, which is, he's he's approaching middle age. He's 37, and in 1943, that was definitely middle age. And he has he has kind of got it all. He's at the top of the mountain, and he thinks that's the way it's going to keep going. But that is the exact moment where the ground turns to quicksand. And. I, I think that's something we can all relate to. We've all been to moments in our life like that. Wow. Uh, well, n- nice to get to know you, Dennis. Uh, the book is called World Gone By. I was sent a copy of it. It's a nice hardcover copy of the novel. It's a uh, great read. And uh, Dennis Lahane is the author, and you can have the book if you call me right now, and it'll be waiting for you here at the station. The rest of us have to go buy it. So uh, do you have a website we can go to? Uh, yeah, it's just DennisLahane.com. I was wondering, uh, were you able to work with the actors uh, Leonardo DiCaprio on uh, Shutter Island and uh, Ben Affleck and, uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, Mystic sure, River, yeah. Sean Penn, were, were you able to actually meet them and, and give oh, yeah. them your you know view of the characters? Only if they asked, but they would always ask. So yeah, I was not somebody who was going to walk on the set and be like, hey, let me tell you who you are. But um, if they were if if they were interested in like for example Sean uh, Penn and and DiCaprio, Leo DiCaprio they're they're extremely curious actors so they they would sit down across from me and they would just you know pepper me with questions about the character oh really that's kind of cool it. yeah it's cool so and you think I could weasel my way into being an extra <laughs> actually you just want to fall down right Larry that's the thing <laughs> that's, <laughs> it. that's it I just want something for my great grandchildren to say hey look at that hey. <laughs> I'll, I'll check with the Florida Stuntman Association. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See if you're not taking any jobs away from me. <laughs> well, your book is definitely enthralling, and it is a, a wonderful read. I mean, you really, you know, get the reader from beginning to end. Very, very excellent. No, that's great. Thank you. I'm glad you responded that way. You're welcome. Um, thank you for getting up early. You said you're in L.A., right? Oh, no, you're in Boston no, today. In Boston. Right that's, now I'm on tour, so I'm in Boston. That's right. That's right. On, on your time. Uh, well, uh, Dennis, thank you for being on the air with us, and uh, good luck with everything you do. I think you, you're blessed with luck, so... <laughs> or or just with talented writing. Maybe that's more accurate. He works for it. Dennis, oh, yeah, thanks. works... F- yeah. Thank you, Dennis. You guys take care. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio.